audacia. I'm going to start in 30 seconds. Everyone here okay? 30 seconds. Okay. Jesse, let us know. Who's going to let us know when we can start? Okay, we're going to start the press conference in a couple of seconds. I want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening as Tropical, Tropical Storm Darby approaches the island of Oahu. As you now know, the entire state of Hawaii is on a, a tropical storm watch. All counties along with the state are taking this storm very seriously. As we know, our sister county, the county of Hawaii, is undergoing the brunt of Darby. In some ways, that's good news because they have two very large mountains, Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, who's having some impact on the strength of this storm, and you can see that it's breaking up a little bit. We hope that continues, and as it tracks by Maui, we hope that Haleakala will have much the same kind of impact. But we are planning for the worst and hoping for the best. We do not want to take any chances. We're asking all of the public who are viewing this broadcast to please take precaution as the storm approaches our island. As you know, we are going to be placed under flash flood watch at 6 this evening, the island of Oahu. And as I mentioned, the EOC has been activated as of noon today and will stay activated during the duration of the storm in, storm's impact. We'll be opening seven shelters tomorrow morning at s seven different locations at seven in the morning. Um, people who don't have storm safe homes or people who do not have a home are encouraged to seek shelter in one of these seven shelters locations and we'll be announcing them. We ask that they bring their own food and bedding as those will not be provided. We will accept pets, and we're gonna be pet friendly, but we'd like people to bring pets on a leash if they're dogs, um, or in a crate if possible. We really wanna thank the American Red Cross who will be staffing these shelters, along with the Hawaiian Humane Society, we're gonna be providing also assistance for those who do bring their pets. Bus shuttles will take those who need, particularly the homeless folks, to get to one of these shelters. Where are the seven shelters? I'm gonna name them. Wailua District Park, Waihua District Park, Wainai District Park, Waimanalo District Park, Eva Beach Community Park, McKinley High School Gym, and BYU in Laie. Those are the seven shelters, and you can see they're, they're scattered around the entire island of Oahu. Hanauma Bay is going to be closed tomorrow because of dangerous surf. We do not want anyone to, to get themselves in trouble. All other parks on the that are run by the city and county of Honolulu are gonna be open tomorrow. Although we really ask people to use extreme precaution. We will close them if it looks like it's a dangerous situation. Ocean Safety who is here with us today will advise us on an ad need basis, as need basis, as to which park should be closed and then we will act immediately. We're gonna allow permitted camping to continue this evening. And we're hoping campers tomorrow morning before the storm approaches Oahu will pack up early and head home before the storm, the brunt of the storm impacts this island. As I mentioned, the mountains of Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, Hualalai, Haleakala could have significant positive impact on this storm, and we hope it does, and that we don't suffer any heavy consequences from the storm's approach. Harbors have been closed on both the Big Island and Maui as we speak. Um, our harbors division will be assessing whether the ports on Oahu should be closed sometime after 8 this afternoon. DLNR has closed all parks, state parks, on the island of Hawaii and Maui. They're open on Oahu and Kauai, and they'll be evaluating the situation just like we are. The Pride of America, that large cruise ship, if you go down to Honolulu Harbor, you'll see it there, is in the process of loading passengers so they can depart before the storm approaches. Now, here's what we expect right now. We expect winds to be in the 25 to 40 uh, mile an hour sustained category. So, you know, we get gusty trades stronger than that, but they're going to be coming from a different angle and they could have stronger impact as a result. And we expect gusts up to 60 miles per hour. And we could experience flash flooding. And so we're asking everyone, if you're going to be traveling somewhere, you see water crossing a road, turn around, don't drown. Turn around, don't drown. Don't think I can get through this. 
Um, we're expecting the east shores of this island to have surf in the 10 to 14 foot category. And here's what we're really asking the public tomorrow. It is Sunday. We're really glad it's Sunday when the brunt of this storm impacts this island. Stay indoors tomorrow. You know, read a good book, play Monopoly with your family, watch TV, catch up on your sleep, and limit yourself only to essential travel. Don't be out on the roads. And please, please don't go into the mountain and say, let's go hiking or check out what the stream looks like. And don't go into the ocean. You know, you endanger yourself. You endanger the first responders who are in this room today. We do not want to endanger anyone. So please, stay home. Enjoy your family. The Tin Man Triathlon has been postponed um, to next week, and we're glad about that. The Kaimuki Carnival has been rescheduled for next weekend. Um, we have prepared an emergency declaration for the city and county of Honolulu, but I'm not going to sign it unless we absolutely have to. We want to make sure that we don't impact too far the daily lives of all of us. But we believe by sharing information with you this evening, all of your viewers can take precaution and be safe. And hopefully this storm won't, won't impact us. And that's our hope. So use it in an abundance of caution, just like us. Plan for the worst and hope for the best. With that, I want to turn it over to Peter Hurai, who is the Honolulu Deputy Director of Emergency Management to say a few, few words. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, everybody. We have opened the Emergency Operations Center, the City and County EOC, as of noon today. We will be running 24-7 operations until this event is over unless or until it has safely passed. As the mayor said, we are planning for the worst and hoping for the best. Uh, the mayor already gave you the shelter schedule. The shelters will be open at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, our team with the American Red Cross, Humane Society, the department, multiple departments in the city, Department of Education, all of our partners have been working really hard together to get these shelters planned, staffed, and opened. So we do thank everyone for their cooperation. If you don't need to go to a shelter, please stay at home. If you absolutely need to shelter, if you, are, if you do not have a residence, or if you feel your residence is so lightly constructed that it might be hazardous in a strong windstorm or strong rains, then please evacuate to the shelter. At seven o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll also have the city call center staffed and opened, and we will be releasing that number. The, the number for that planned city call center is 768-2389, 768-2389, that's 768-CITY and that will be open as of 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, anybody with questions on the sheltering can call that number. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Hey, thank you, Peter, really appreciate it. But the hotline is open now, if you want to call. Next up, uh, Captain Conishiro, Honolulu Police Department. Thanks, Captain, for being here again, appreciate it. Hi, good afternoon, Gerald Conishiro from the Honolulu Police Department. Uh, right now, we're just continuing normal operations and maintaining public safety is our priority. And like the mayor and people had said, you know, if you don't have to be out on the road traveling, it's because of the high winds, the rain, just the impact of the weather, you know, it may make driving conditions hazardous because of the debris on the roadway or traffic signals may be out. So please you know, stay home if you don't need to be out. And thank, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Captain, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, Kevin Allen, Chief of Operations, Ocean Safety. Thanks, Kevin, for being here again, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Um, what we really want to do is just encourage everybody, be safe, be vigilant. Don't go in the ocean. Stay away from any of the shorelines. Stay away from the tide pools and any of the ledges where, you know, we, we know that there's surf out there. We know it's coming and it's going to be dangerous. Um, ocean safety is going to come on tomorrow morning at six and about 6 o'clock to evaluate what the uh, weather conditions are and then staff appropriately, depending on the winds and the waves and what we see out there. Um, again, just stay, you know, like the mayor said, stay indoors. The, you know, st stay out of the ocean until this storm passes. You want to talk about brown water a little bit too? Um, well, you know, as we know, with, with all this rain, we're going to have the brown water advisories. And that, you know, with brown water comes sharks, comes just, you know, it, all kinds of different uh, troubles. You know, all the pollutants and just different, uh, things coming from the mountains. So really, again, with all that stuff in the ocean, it's just better just to stay out, let it clean itself up, and then go in after, you know, give it a couple of days. 
Thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks, Kevin. Ginny Chicago, hello, Deputy Director of Parks and Rec, coming up. Ginny. Aloha, everyone. Jeannie Shikawa, Deputy Director for the Department of Parks and Recreation. The department will be closing Hanama Bay tomorrow on Sunday due to anticipated rough waters and, as was just mentioned, brown water advisories. So we again announced that Hanama Bay will be closed tomorrow and we'll make determination uh, regarding Monday. As far as our parks, all city parks and our beaches uh, remain open at this time, but we do urge all park users and beachgoers to monitor the weather reports to make sure that you make wise decisions on whether to be out in our parks or going to our beaches. All those who are holding park permits for picnics or events also make, your, make wise decisions on whether to continue with your events or not. We want everyone to be safe over this weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Appreciate it. Next up is Lori Kina, the Director of Environmental Services. Please listen to Lori and what she has to say because we repeat this over and over and then people don't listen and they cause problems with our sewer system. So Lori, coming up and repeat it, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. On our solid waste side, it's business as usual. Most of our um, refuse division or refuse base yards have reported to me that all the trash has been collected. As Mayor mentioned, on the wastewater side, when you see flooding, please do not open up our manholes. It's two separate systems, stormwater, one set of pipes, wastewater, separate set. And when you open up your manholes, you let your rain, I mean, rain gutters go into our system, it overwhelms our sewer lines, overwhelms our treatment plants, and we have large spills like we did last August. Um, as far as the construction projects, we've, we've stopped everything for now to make sure that we're in the best scenario that we can be when all of that rainwater somehow does get into our system. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Laurie. Appreciate it. You know, everyone, we're a compassionate community. We always worry about those who don't have houses. Uh, Jun Yang is the executive director of our housing office. I want him to talk a little bit about the challenges faced by those who don't have homes and what we're going to be doing about it. Thanks, Jun. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, ever since we've gotten news of the storm coming, uh, ever since Friday, we've been working with our outreach teams all across the island. Our outreach teams have been going all around the island to inform all those who have been living in the parks or who are on the streets that the storm is coming to stay out of uh, flooded area, areas that are prone to flooding, streams and along the beaches. Um, we have our outreach teams going tonight, also tomorrow morning as well, to inform and also to let them know about the evacuation routes. We've been working closely with uh, Parks Department, DOE, and with DTS, with the, the route systems, and we've got to say thank you, a big mahalo to these great organizations working so closely with us and the outreach teams to really help inform the community of what is available and the shelters that are available to them. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, John. You know, government couldn't do this when we face these kinds of challenges from Mother Nature, whether it be hurricanes, tsunamis, or other natural uh, phenomena. And the private sector steps up the not-for-profits, and front and center is the American Red Cross of Hawaii. And Coralie Mariyoshi has been a long-time executive of that organization. She's here with us, and of course, she'll be helping us with the shelters. So thanks, Coralie, once again, and come on up and say a few words. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. We've been working all week long to call down hundreds of volunteers to help with our shelters, uh, mental health, and um, disaster uh, damage assessment. And um, we uh, about a uh, over 100 people uh, stayed in our Big Island and Maui shelters. There were 18 of them open. Most of them will be open again tonight. And we also opened um, two shelters, uh, an additional shelters today on Lanai and Molokai. We are just really fortunate to have great partnerships with the counties and the churches. The Medical Reserve Corps has contributed for our health services and companies like Walmart who contributed water as well. So the main message is, again, is um, do not come to the shelters unless you need to. And if you do come, it's there just to hunker down and you need to bring all of your own supplies like food and water and bedding. Thank you. Thanks, Coralie. Uh, before it open up to questions, I do want to emphasize again, we have our, our, our hotline open at 768-CITY. 768-CITY is open right now. Uh, feel free to call if you have any questions, again, about shelters or bus service to get you to the shelters or any other questions. We do want to assist the public any way we can. Um, again, we're hoping this storm is a non-event here on Oahu. We don't know that yet. And so we're going to plan accordingly and inform you through the information sources you have right now so you know what you need to do in case it doesn't dissipate. We hope it does. With that, we'll open up to any other questions you may have regarding a Storm Darby. 
Yes. You know, we had the visitor industry folks here yesterday, and um, they've assured us that they're working closely with the visitors. Each hotel has been notifying their guests, uh, putting messages in each of their rooms and telling people as they check in to stay tuned and informed with, with, with the folks at each of the hotels so they know what to do, where to go, where not to go. Um, we're hoping that the storm passes quickly by and everyone can get back out to the beaches and enjoy the sun and have fun all around our island in the state of Hawaii. Um, so both working through the Tourism Authority and Tourism and Lodging, they're getting the information out to the visitor industry. Anything else? Um, we usually look at that at the end of the event. Now, obviously, it's impacted about how, how significant it is. Um, we have staffed up the EOC. There are some overtime costs there, but the real overtime cost comes depending on the strength of the storm, the duration of the storm. As you can see, we're holding off from issuing, for example, emergency proclamations because that really ramps it up. And that's why I'm saying we're trying to calibrate our response depending on the information that we get as the storm passes by our sister counties to the south. Right, but we don't usually put as much out, like we're regular bus service, you know, we're regular garbage, we're not doing anything special or different right now other than opening up shelters, uh, closing Hon Honoluma Bay, and asking people to tune in to your stations to make sure um, that they get the information that they need. And I think that's how you control costs. Do you have an idea what it would take to issue that emergency? I think if we saw major impact and damage on the county of Hawaii and the county of Maui, um, that would definitely get me to issue the proclamation. So far, we're not seeing that. You saw the reports at five by your stations, and it actually, um, it, you know, it looked like we had wind, some trees down, some water damage, but nothing significant enough to have me think we need to implement it. We'll have the proc here in the, in the EOC, and I'll be ready to sign it at a moment's notice. We'll, be, we'll know more by tomorrow morning for sure. We will stick around for individual questions from any of our team here. Okay? I want to thank you. I'm asking all of you, please stay tuned to both TV, radio, and make sure you're fully informed in the next 24 hours. Thank you so much.